Hey, I'm Daniel and I have been a Miro Power user for almost four years now. I have been teaching it a lot as well. And in this video, I want to teach you everything that you need to know in order to work with Miro with confidence without being slow or making beginner mistakes. I will, for example, show you the best ways to easily navigate the board, quickly create content and how to collaborate with other people in real time and much more. And on top of that, we're going to do all of this in less than six minutes. So the pressure is on me. It's better to get started. So let's jump in. When you open a mirror board, this is what you might see. Actually, there are two things here. First of all, you have the board canvas and all of the board content on it. Apparently here, it's a project retrospective board, as we can read here. And then all around the board canvas, we have various different uh, toolbars that you can use to do things on the board. Let's start exploring those. So in the top left, you have the board menu and board settings. For example, I can click on the board name here. I can change the name, the thumbnail, and I can delete, duplicate, or share the board depending on the permissions I have. Then if I click here, I can see the board settings. If I click on export, I can click uh, on export as image or export as PDF or in any other format that I like it to be. And then also if I need to find a text or image, I can search for uh, different keywords to find those elements on the board. Speaking of finding things, you probably guessed already there's more to this board than meets the eye. So let's say you want to explore this. How do you best do that and how do you best navigate? So if you're using a mouse, the best way to zoom in and out is to simply use your mouse wheel. So that way you can quickly zoom out. Then in order to move your viewport um, and go to a different place on the board, what you do is you right click and hold down your right click. So you click right, hold it, and then you move your mouse. If you are on a trackpad, the way to do this is in order to zoom in and out, you just use a pinch gesture and then to move left, right, top or bottom, you can use two fingers to basically slide around. And that way you can move to different parts of the board. For example, to this sailboat retrospective here. Which brings us to the next point. Let's say you want now to create some content uh, for this sailboat retrospective and add your thoughts to it. For creating content, you have to look at the left side at the creation toolbar. Here you have different elements such as uh, text, sticky notes, shapes, connection lines, pen, and many more. Actually, if you click on plus, you can see all of those here. And if you want, this is a quick tip, you can quickly drag those into your toolbar and resort your toolbar that way. And of course, the reverse is also possible. But let's close it for now. Let's say you want to add a sticky note. For that, you can uh, just click on a sticky note and then, then drag it out here. A fast way to do this is also just quickly dragging it out from here, which can be done also with most of the important elements. Now we have the sticky note in here. The way to select the sticky note is to just click once on it. We see a blue line around it and we see the context menu popping up. Here we can change some of the settings, such as, for example, the color. If we want to edit it now, you just double click into it. You see the blinking cursor and I can add some text to it here. So this is a very fast and efficient way to work with content. Another tip here is if you are in a sticky note and you press tap on the keyboard, it actually automatically creates a new one and you can start typing again. To move elements, just hold your mouse over them click and then move them immediately so you can move them around like this. Let's say you want to collaborate with somebody now on the sailboat retrospective. For that, we can look in the top right to the communication toolbar. And here we can actually see who is uh, on the board as well. So we can see here somebody with the name Maria is on the board. If we click on that icon, we can show her cursor and we see that she's somewhere in the top right on the board. If I actually click on her avatar, I can actually move to her viewpoint and see where she currently is. Now, if I move back to the sailboat retrospective, I can actually click on my own avatar and bring it to my viewpoint. This only works if you are like a board owner or co-owner, but it's also a very neat way to bring people uh, towards your viewpoint if you need help or also if you want to show them something. You can also click here on reactions to trigger reactions and everybody sees them in real time. And you can also leave comments on the board. Here on the left side, you have different apps and tools that you can use for collaborating, such as the timer, voting, uh, and also something like notes, where you can add notes uh, to the board. And the last two things I would really like to show you is here in the, in the bottom left, you have the uh, frame settings, where you can see all of the frames on the board. Frames are basically how you organize things um, on the board. 
where you put content into frames. It's basically like a slide. And I can click here to move to different uh, frames as well. And this is very great for an overview and especially also great for the order of the export. And then also the last thing here in the bottom right, you see uh, the Miro AI tools. So if you click on that, you can use AI to work within Miro. But that's everything that you need to know in order to work in Miro with confidence. Now you learned how to work in Miro, but some things might still feel very tedious and time consuming to do. If that is the case, watch our popular Miro tips and tricks video next to go from Miro beginner to Miro hero.